every job I've had, someone's like, are you Lou McEachern's daughter? I had a really close friend and I went for lunch with her and her mom and her mom said, are you Lou McEachern's daughter? And I said, yes. She said, oh my gosh, I worked with him in the 1988 Olympics for a week. She's like, and I've never forgotten him. He's so generous, so kind. He's a very humble man. He does not talk a lot about his giving or his business success, but his giving started at the same time he started his company, ServePro. They just went hand in hand. When you serve up a scenario to him or tell him, what, what would you do, Lou? He could open steel doors to this guy just by talking to them. You know, it was just amazing. I think his hard work, he was always thinking of his family and wanting us to, you know, have a better life than his growing up. You know, I think when you look at where he came from, anybody can do it. Born in Hazel Grove, PEI, and if you were driving through that area and you close your eyes for two seconds, you'll not know you were there. We were quite poor boys that went to school after grade eight were considered sissies. I started to work on a potato farm when I was 16, 45 cents an hour. And I think at that time I realized there might be something a little better somewhere. Uh, so I decided one day I've got to make up my mind whether I'm going to go to school and try to get an education or forget it and let's get on with life. Lots of people wouldn't. Lots of people would just continue on and figure things out. But I feel like he knows the value of education and knows that that was going to give him a leg up. How old were you? 23. I went to the Minister of Education, Dr. Shaw, in Charlottetown. Anyway, he said, we have four grade 10 classes. There's the bright ones and then the rest, and then that's the slow one. Would you be insulted if I put you in the slow one? I said, no. I, I was the old man with the briefcase. When we got here, Calgary was 110,000 people. When he came to Calgary in the early 60s, he wasn't sure what he was going to do. So he opened up the phone book and said, man, there's, I think there was 300 carpet cleaners. There must be room for one more because there's a lot of people with dirty carpets here. I didn't know that you couldn't start a business with $300 or broken down an old wagon and a partner with a liquor problem. But we just went ahead and did it anyway. We cleaned carpets, we did janitorial, we did a great lot of work after fires and floods for insurance companies. Sir Pro, prior to my, my buying it, Lou was always into advertising, marketing, TV, radio. He did it all. You saw those cars, you knew it was Surf Pro. Oh, you did damn right. Huh? That was the plan. I think we're doing about 16 million a year when we sold it in 1999. I made so much more money since I sold the business than I ever did running this. <laughs> you know, he gives all the credit to, to his wife, Hilda. He deserves a lot of credit as well. I don't know if it's 50%. It was uh, four blocks from here. Then she was with um, University Christian Fellowship on the second floor, and we were on the main floor, and that's where I met her, yeah. And then we got married in 66. We have three children. My dad was super generous father, still is. Very kind, very loving. We traveled all over the world as young children, which was amazing. He just has the biggest heart of anyone you've ever met. And I think helping people has always been the number one thing. I can remember, you know, he was on the Cancer Society board, you know, always been involved in stuff, Junior Achievement, Duke of Edinburgh Awards. He's always been a member of Rotary. We did a big family trip and we went to, he had done some traveling in the Middle East. My dad slipped this kid a hundred bucks. And when we were leaving on the bus, we saw him traveling through the field and he was skipping along and just so happy and so thrilled. And I was like, you just feel so proud. 
so like amazing that that's your dad and that's how he did it and he did it on the down low like he does everything I think that he's contributed to the city of Calgary just by obviously his generosity and also his connections. I think that community to him means a lot. I think it's just inside of him as a person and it is truly giving with wanting nothing back. There's no expectations. And I think it's truly rare nowadays. I'm humbled. I mean amazement of his accomplishments. The amount of good he had spread around Calgary, it, it was just, it was beautiful. Lou will leave a, a big mark on uh, the city of Calgary. What do you consider to be your greatest accomplishment? Living to be 90. <laughs> you're starting a business, or you're in business or whatever, don't let the bastards grind you down. People ask me now, uh, when, when are you going to retire? And I say, well, what do you do when you retire? And the answer is, you do what you like. I guess I'm retired. <laughs>